want to thank you for watching this video, and I hope you find it as informative and by no means to be considered as a last word in online aerial combat. It's just some basic information that can be used to enhance your enjoyment while playing World War, on World War II Online, Battleground Europe, or any game that has an air combat component. The few bits and pieces that I've put together into this video are just some of the maneuvers that can be implemented to help you be successful as an online pilot. I originally created this video in order to help new members to my squad, and uh, but I felt that it, other people might be able to uh, glean the information from this and help use it in their enjoyment. Before we get into the actual maneuvers, I would like to point out uh, one thing having to do with Axis airplanes, both in-game and in real life, um, and that is the leaning edge of the wings, which is their a wing slat. Uh, note that these spring-loaded wing extensions that pop out when there is a disruption of the smooth airflow over the leaning edge of the wing. When there's no longer enough pressure to hold that slat in place, the wing slat forces itself to deploy, and this means that the wing is about to, or has, just stalled, and by springing outward, it changes the camber of the wing, restoring some lift before the complete stall occurs. This gives the pilot a few seconds to recover. With this audio cue, it lets you know that uh, you need to pay attention to your airspeed and, of course, the angle of attack of your wing with respect to the direction of travel. The normal airflow holds the slat in place, typically once uh, you are above 98 kilometers per hour, and uh, it is held against the wing in, when in normal flight. When this air pressure is distur disturbed, or by moving in a slow, you know, moving, you know, too slow, or you're suddenly uh, changing direction by changing your angle uh, of attack with respect to the direction that you're flying, um, then the wing slats will deploy. There's also an audio cue that says spring forward rather loudly <laughs> and going in and out. You can see this uh, being demonstrated in the video here. Uh, right now the plane has the wings uh, flap, uh, flaps configured in full while it's doing a, a pirouette and it's coming back in the other direction. And you note as the flaps retract and the plane begins to try to climb again that the wing slats first starting on the right and now on the left uh, side of the wing it's deploy for a few seconds because right at that point there was uh, very little uh, lift in that, that area of the wing. And as these uh, deploy of course it uh, uh, restores some balance to the uh, control of the, of the uh, aircraft. Now of course this means that uh, whoever's following behind you uh, if they're in the same situation, particularly if it's an allied plane, they don't have the uh, slat assist. So therefore, if you change directions in the opposite direction rather rapidly, uh, and they try to follow, then they're going to end up stalling out, and in most cases, you will gain the advantage, or if you're low enough to the ground, they may crash. Uh, Connect kind of your elevator to your elevator trim tab, which um, to your elevators. Now the elevators themselves are the, the, the rear section you see back there, and again, very basic Air flows over it. Right now, it's at neutral position, so the air flowing over and under is approximately the same. Except the front of this plane is relatively heavy, especially with all the machine guns and the cannons loaded in the front end. So the plane ten plane tends to kind of nose downward. Uh, so you generally have to uh, fly with either by trimming, hitting your K key, and I'm hitting the K key right now a whole bunch of times, and it moves so slowly that you can't really see it. Now I've hit it about 30 times now. And uh, other than looking right at the root of the fuselage, where you can actually see just the tiniest little bit of change there, uh, that entire horizontal structure uh, maneuvered, and it, it's, what it's done is it's mo moved upward slightly, and in doing so, it changes the, the airflow over the tail end of the section of the plane, pulling the ta tail down and, of course, raising the nose up. Now, if you really want to be able to have a maneuverable plane and not have to sit there and fool with the trim, in such a way that you're always trimming the plane to make it fly faster, further, faster, all of that. You can do it manually through the joystick the, uh, through the entire time while you're flying. Uh, for example, again, we'll go to our key mapper, go to fighters, uh, we'll go to the uh, elevator trim tab. We'll set it up, you're gonna hit your left control, do your joystick upwards and downwards, then you're gonna save the change. And then we're gonna go back and then now watch the elevator you see the entire section move with your elevator, so you have the trim tab and the elevators moving together. Now the only drawback with that is that if you pull too hard on the joystick, it, it, it not only moves the back end of the plane or, uh, down or up, if you do it in this direction, very rapidly, but it also increases your drag. 
so it's going to really slow you down quite a bit. So you, what you want to do is get used to just doing uh, small maneuvers, unless you really absolutely have to, and of course then you, know, you need that in a dire emergency. But what that looks like uh, as you're doing this uh, is that the, the plane will actually maneuver considerably. Let's see if we can get whoop, too close. There we go. We'll take this up for a minute here and we'll give you some examples. Watch your forward slats as they move in. Right now they're at the position that would give it your, the best amount of uh, lift for the speed. Now that we're above 60 kilometers per hour, those uh, forward leading slats have gone inward. Going to raise the plane up, raise the landing gear, and you can see the landing gear has uh, gone up into its fuselage there. And uh, I'm going to show you some of these maneuvers uh, as best I can. Now this plane is not as maneuverable as, say, the 109F France model that I was flying just uh, in one of the other videos, showing this uh, same uh, type of situation with that uh, elevator move maneuvering. But uh, it this one moves, uh, and it's much larger, so it's much easier to see. Uh, you don't want us to, to set that up for the um, bombers like the uh, Stuka and the, um, well the Stuka is not too bad, it, you can use it on the Stuka, but you don't want to do it on the HE-111, that's the main one you don't want to do it on. Um, it's also best to leave the Stuka alone as well, and the reason why is um, the Stuka, you need to be able to just gently set the up trim so that the plane is trimmed to do a gentle climb. It's a plane that it's way underpowered for the amount of weight that it carries, and if you um, here, let's change the setting on the, the time here. There we go. Um, and the reason why is because uh, if you have it set where your uh, joystick is, then uh, generally you have to fly it in that climb all the time. You have to keep your hand on the joystick the whole time. Um, doing it in this setting here, if I let go of it, let it settle for a minute or so, I can actually go ahead and trim it. It takes quite a few hits it'll begin to start to climb but as long as I don't touch the joystick or bump it very hard I can actually trim the plane and you're and you gotta remember that you're trimming that entire section back there not just the elevators itself but the, the trim section in front of the elevators and um, and that's one of the reasons why I can get my 110 up to faster speeds than, uh, than normally a lot of times people say hi oh how do you um, how do you make that plane go so fast? And I tell them well, a lot of experience. Well, yeah, a lot of experience, practice, and a few little tricks. And that's one of them. Now, let's give you an example here. I'm going to pull back on this joystick, and I'm going to go ahead and crank it all the way.